Good morning. Uh, this is another episode of Orgasmic Conscious Cooking with John Ashford. This morning, I'm starting off a little bit different. Before you see me on camera, I just want to show you the equipment that I'm using and the products that I'm using to create this masterpiece of a gluten-free pecan orange coffee cake. Unfortunately, there's other recipes. I usually don't like using dairy, but I have guests coming over and I need to test it with some artificial sour cream before because it costs for sour cream in the back behind the eggs. I don't know if you can see that there, the sour cream right there. That is full of dairy. It's organic, but the recipe called for that, and I didn't want to alternate, use any alternative at this moment with guests coming. I like to test things out on myself first. In the back, uh, you'll see here, right there, my one of my favorite utensils in the kitchen is a Cozenar food processor. I do all types of things. It's actually, if you eat dairy and you like cheese, it's cheaper to buy blocks of cheese and grate it yourself, and that works marvelous. But I use it like when I take the pecans here, I'm going to take these pecans and combine it with the cinnamon and brown sugar, and that's going to be the filling for the coffee cake. On the right, you'll see uh, in front of, oh, so let me go back real quick. Okay, so I'll just stay on focus. Okay, you're hanging with me. Uh, what happens to me when I was little, I was like jump around, jump around, jump around, and uh, my mom gave me so many activities such as cooking that this actually helped me slow down my pace. But anyway, the baking uh, and pancake mix is gluten-free. It's by Pamela's. That's my favorite so far because I have to tell you, it resembles still gluten products when I eat it. When I first made this coffee cake for my children, they lost their mind because they couldn't believe it was gluten-free. I couldn't either. My dear friend, uh, Steph, Stephanie Vickers, actually gave me insight to buy this. All my ingredients are usually, I try to stay with organic products, least amount of chemicals added. If that works, cool. The mixer in the back, the KitchenAid, I've had that probably for 20 plus years. If you are going to do any cooking, I suggest getting that. It will last you a lifetime. So once again, I'm going to show you as I put this together, but uh, the pan on the left, that's the pan that the coffee cake is going to be uh, baked in. And that's coconut oil spray that I use to coat the pot so that it won't stick. This has a little bit more sugar, so something has a tendency to, uh, to stick, so make sure you spray and prepare your pan before that. I want you to see something as I start to mix it. If you look at the orange stuff on top of the mix, that is actually orange. Uh, I grated orange peel, uh, about a teaspoon of that, because I want a hint of orange flavor in it. Yeah, I guess that's it. It's time for me to get started, so you can guys see me actually put this together and put it in the oven. I have a company that's going to be over here in an hour. This portion of this show, I just wanted to get, let you guys see all the ingredients. If you have any questions, please do not ever hesitate. Call me, contact me on my YouTube channel, being John Ashford, and please subscribe. Let me know what you think. Give suggestions. If you've done this before and you want to make some changes, please let me know. If you know great substitutes for sour cream, I'm open for that too. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace. Okay, we're at it. Okay, you guys, I showed you a clip before about the ingredients that goes in this, this coffee cake. Uh, why uh, gluten-free? Uh, for me, I'm on this because I'm not a medical doctor. I can't tell you what to do and what not to do. I'm just going to speak from my experience. Uh, one, I like to eat. I like the orgasmic feeling of eating. It creates, it helps me get in a creative mode of doing anything. I like the food, the wine, the music. And I got really lucky this lifetime and blessed to have Pamela Marie Ashford as the, the head teacher of showing me how to cook. And I think it shows in my food. So I'm going to get right on top of this. Uh, this is the food processor. What you have in here is I'm going to put this on pulse. It's actually pecans, cinnamon, and brown sugar. That's the filling. You just pulse a little bit. You don't want to grind the nuts totally up. I'm going to see if I can show you what this looks like. Take this out of here. Take this out of here. I hope you can see this. This is actually the ground uh, pecans and uh, brown sugar and cinnamon. You can use pretty much any nut of your choice. Uh, I don't think I'll use a peanut because I really don't think peanuts are nuts, but I can talk about that later. Yeah, so that's the filling. We'll be right back and we'll start on the batter. Hello. 
Uh, what you see here is something that I made a faux pas. So I'm gonna explain something real quick so I can pour this water off. I didn't take the eggs out last night. Usually when you bake, it's great at best uh, if you take the eggs out, let them become room temperature because my mom explained to me when I was cooking a, a long time ago that it allows the eggs to help expand, okay? So this, these eggs are now kind of room temperature. They were in the fridge. I'm gonna pour the water out. And the other piece that you wanna look about eggs is that I put eggs in the single at one time because if there's a bad egg, you don't want to put it in the bowl here because if you have the rest of your butter and your sugar, then you have to start all over. So I always start with a, a single bowl, so each egg going one at a time. So if it's a bad egg, I can grab another egg. The other piece too is that I forgot to take the butter out, but because some 20 odd years ago, I invested in this great machine called KitchenAid, I can take the room, leave it out for about an hour like I've done so far, put this on high, and it's gonna soften the butter. And I'll show you what that looks like when we come back. Now that we got the butter softened, I'm gonna add, this is a cup of sugar. I add the sugar there. And what I'm gonna do is let it whip up so it can demand. And one of the ideal things about, aspects about this KitchenAid, it adds more air in the batter. And you have to be careful because sometimes it kicks some of the batter out of the bowl. There's a shield that also comes with it. Safety thing, and safety thing in COVID, I wash my hands multiple times. I don't eat out of my bowls as I'm cooking. And if I do eat out of my bowls, if you ever see me eat something while I'm doing one of these programs, I discard the, the spoon or the dishwasher and I start off with a new spoon. But even before COVID, it is not suggested that you eat out of your bowls as you're preparing somebody's meal. Now this is the common mistake a lot of people make that I've watched before, is that people will taste and then lick their finger. That is also contaminating your back. Just a side note, okay? So one of the other things that I have to do, I didn't get all my equipment, I'll be right back in here. Is that in this mixer, what has happened is the, the sugar has settled and some of the butter's on the side, so what I have to do is turn it off, unlock it, lift it, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape the walls. Oh, scrape the walls, what did that sound like? Okay, uh, inside joke, only some people know that in this room. So, uh, you scrape the butter, you see how this is still kind of thick and heavy? Perfect, watch this. So, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the uh, vanilla. It's a teaspoon of vanilla, which is a cap pretty much of vanilla. I turn it on low, add the vanilla. Yummy, yummy, yummy vanilla. Turn that back on high so it can be incorporated. Incorporated with the butter and sugar. So then I let it turn it back down below. So now I'm gonna start adding the eggs. So, like I said before, you want to remember to actually add the eggs one at a time. So, and not to get any shells inside. So if you do this, no shell inside, toss that thing, voila, Michael Jordan from the outside. I'm turning this down. I'm at one egg. And what I do is I add one at a time and I, like, I, really, like, I really let it incorporate so that actually it starts, and what you're gonna start, it's gonna start to expand. Ooh, another concept that's good in difficult times. Learn how to expand, not to contract. So cooking can teach you how to survive during COVID, or COVID, or racism riots, or police, or people. So what can you learn in the kitchen that could be transferred to your community? For me, it brings me peace and ease. That's why I do it. And I and I and like last night when we had company over, I was able to share my love through difficult times through my food. So once again, it is a small process. Down 
down low. Incorporate the other egg. Wash the hands. I always keep soap water. I always keep soap water in the in the sink so I can wash my hands constantly. I use hand soap. But really, really important, people. Uh, let's not spread any more disease. Especially if I have to come to your house and eat. Just kidding. No, just take care of you and your family. Peace. Okay. Okay. So we're getting there. We're almost there. So right now you have eggs, two eggs, two thirds cup of butter, a cup of sugar, two cups of mix, and that was Pamela's mix that I showed you. Some orange braid. You give it just a hint of a orange bite. And what I'm going to do. Completely turn it off, lift it up. Now, what I do, safety guys. Usually I don't do this, but I don't want, I'm gonna show you. When you unplug, this thing can be really dangerous. I've been using it so often that I'm not too afraid of it, but if you get your finger stuck in here, you could break your arm and your finger. That's how powerful this is. If you hit it on accident, and I, I've done that almost before, so I put this in. So the two cups, this back on without making a mess. And plug it back in, lock it, and on low. If you put dry ingredients with something wet and you turn it on high, poof, you look like cats with a friendly ghost. That's not what's required right now in these two seconds. So, so, what I'm trying to find, what I will find is an alternative ingredient, because my wife and I are trying not to do dairy, but today I have to use the sour cream. So what I'm gonna do is add this in on low. I add it in tablespoon to tablespoon so I can get it in there. It's, and this calls for eight ounces, and this is actually a cup. So I'm gonna pour this in. Get that all in there, it's looking more and more yummy. When I was a kid, I used to like eating batter. If I eat batter now, cute, I think that's good. I can't do it. What about you? And sometimes it would be nice for you guys if you watch this and you see this, let me know what you think. Because I'm really open to suggestions on what you would like to see me prepare. And if you have baked this before, what type of alternatives have you found instead of sour cream? That would be helpful. Because I'm trying to learn how to eat, not just healthy, but more, what is it, uh, a little bit wider. That's the word that I want to use. That's not the correct word, but I'm going to explain what that means. I want to be able to have other resources in the kitchen, so if I want to make something totally dairy-free, gluten-free, I have those options. Not that it's right or wrong, it's just what I choose now. So, this is that. Combine. Once more, I scrape the walls to make sure, because a lot of times the butter likes to hang out at the bottom. And I don't want to make sure I incorporate everything together so this is nice and smooth. Now, did you see how I did the faux pas I got on my hand back in the day? Or maybe you would like to lick that. I'm really, sometimes when I watch you do stuff like that, it makes me like, ooh, food poison. So what I do is I use my, I had a paper towel. I use a lot of paper towels when I'm cooking too. And Get this over here. Okay. This is the batter. I'm gonna sound like this is America. Yeah. I mean, I did uh, a live on that earlier this week on Facebook about this is America. America's interesting. You know, what I'm always thrilled about it is. Even within its bad times, the possibilities that this, this country can have is like phenomenal because of the makeup of the country, how much diversity is here. But unfortunately, sometimes the stupids get in the way and not look at what's possible with what we could do as a nation being unified. Okay, so this plan already has been oiled. I'm going to take half of the batter if I can get it out of here. I'm going to 
gonna take half of the batter, I'm gonna put it in the bowl, and then I'm gonna take our mix, our, uh, our uh, filling and put it in the middle of the batter. So I take this, and you can smell the orange essence in here. And if you really wanna get kinda of interested, interesting with this, what you could do is you could add oils, essential oils to your batter that might give it even a stronger uh, flavor for what you might be going at. Like food grade. Like food grade. Yeah, food grade. Like, uh, here's a piece of, here's a sale for me. I sell product is doTERRA and they have a lot of food grade, um, oils and, um, they actually add great flavor to dishes, sauces, and I'm beginning to experiment with that. Uh, so yeah, do some research. If you find something, let me know. So, as you can see, I'm going to show you this. What I have here is I filled the base with the batter. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is take this filling and get really creative with it. Not really that creative, but I'll show you what it looks like. You want to make sure that it gets on all of the batter surface and try not to make a mess. Try not to make a mess. And that's the bill. This is my daughter who's coming over for this wonderful uh, interview that we're going to do talking about this morning. We're talking about racism, separation, uh, rioting. Uh, protesting. What does that look like? Who's right? Who's wrong? Does anybody have to be right or wrong? And uh, so I have three young guests coming. So this is what it looks like. I don't want to toss this too much. This is the batter with the, the, the filling in the middle. It's one of my favorite yummy fillings. Pecans are my favorite nuts. Uh, make sure that before you fix anything, find out if your guests are allergic to nuts because you don't want to kill them because I found out that people can die from nuts. Or they can die being a nut. Oh my God, I'm in trouble. Voila. It's great. And also, also one of the things is sometimes you can go buy some of this equipment used at garage sales. Uh, the mixer, the, the KitchenAid mixer, I'm like, I'm just shocked. My mom has one and it's probably about 40 years old, I would say, and it still works. And she's and even in her situation she is right now. My mom still bakes, and she used that mixer. And it's the handy dandy uh, kitchen aid. So, I, and you can always tell when you go to somebody's house that they really know about what they're doing. They usually have that equipment. So what I have to do is spread this out so everything is covered. I want to make sure it's all covered. So I take a spoon and I smooth it out, level it off. Just make sure I have everything covered so nothing escapes. It's like, no, 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 don't let me out of here. Too bad, you're in. I need more batter to make some cover. Voila, this is what it looks like. I'm about to put it in the oven at 375 for 40 to 50 minutes. Uh, I have a convected en uh, engine. <laughs> I have a convected Genera stove that I use, and sometimes that cuts down the, the time. So what I if it's 30 to 40 minutes, I'll put it on 30 and I'll check with a toothpick to make sure that the batter is completely baked, and then I'll pull it out and I'll show you next steps. And this is the batter going in the center of the oven on the center. In the center rack at 375. Up here, turn my timer on. Give me 30 minutes. Voila. Good morning. I am so excited. This is my fucking favorite show today. I got my three warriors and behind me, on the side of me. This is, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Makita, his oldest daughter. I'm Helene, the middle child. Adia. <laughs> my youngest daughter. I am like so joyed to be able to do this one. Let me turn this off so I don't burn myself. Okay, so today 
we're going to have coffee cake, frittata, and scrambled eggs. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about what's going on. Uh, everybody out there know that this is orgasmic conscious cooking. Consciousness is the key word tonight or this morning or wherever you're on planet Earth. I want to invite you to a conversation about what else is different. Today, I'm going to interview my three children and two of their friends. Hopefully, this other person shows up, but once on this way, we're going to talk about what's going on in the world, what would it take to change it in their experience. I want to capture their experience. I'm not going to do much talking, which is going to be kind of impossible, huh? <laughs> but I'm a, I want to hear what they have to say, and I want them to be fully present. And I'm going to invite you to be present with this conversation. I'm going to ask questions around scenarios and what things could be different, but today we're going to hear from my three children and uh, the two of their friends. So, frittata. Frittata is really an Italian uh, omelet that you bake in the oven. You par cook on top and you bake the rest up in the oven. You use Parmesan cheese, but three of us in here, Makita, Tori on the other side of the camera, myself, can't eat dairy. So we're going to go very low dairy. I am going to put like a, a smidgen of butter in it because I want to capture some flavor. Makita's going to help me find some butter flavor olive oil, but the majority of the oil today will be olive oil. Usually I use butter. So what I'll do, I par cook the potatoes, mushrooms, Shallots, and I can't remember what this type of onion is now. Uh, leeks, leeks, there we go. Thanks on the other side. And the egg is Italian seasoning. I use Lori seasoning salt I, and garlic and white pepper. Spinach is our healthy vegetable that's gonna go on top just before it goes in the oven. These are beef sausages, smoked beef sausages, organic beef sausages with no hormones. No cows like this, cows like this. <laughs> so if you like this, would you please go over to the right if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, if you're off not watching a YouTube channel, go over to my YouTube channel, push the button, and subscribe, being John Ashford. Here's the secret of some Spanish olive oil. I was told by a secret person who uses a lot of olive oil, go to Spain and get your olive oil, or California. The, uh, the pure pressed olive oil from Italy sometimes, and Greeks sometimes not pure olive oil. So you do your own research. I'm not sure, it's just I've been told that. I'm just passing things on. This is consciousness. Do not judge me or I'll punch you in your eye. No, just kidding. Let's have some fun, y'all. So we're gonna start out. I do not measure many things because I am an artist. Not Prince, but I am an artist, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I need to turn the heat on, huh? I started at 275 and the, the skill is a little bit warm. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cold a little bit because this oil is gonna saute the, the vegetables but it's also gonna prevent the eggs from sticking when we stick it in the oven. So that's probably about four tablespoons of olive oil. Seems like a lot, probably is to you. Sorry, we're eating this. So here's the thing that this is my science behind this. I go with, if you can look at this down here, I'm gonna bring this forward. I'm gonna put the potatoes in first because anything that is more dense need to cook, they need to cook a little bit longer. Or you'll prepare it and people will be like, eh, the potato will be too hard. And then I will add the onions and the garlic part because that will actually give the potatoes more flavor. Then the mushrooms and the bell peppers go in last so they remain crunchy. Okay, Adi, are you, uh, Kiki, are you laughing at me on the other side of the camera? You are good, Dad. Okay. So, I've been cooking for a long time because of my mama. I love to cook, and I'm excited today again because I have my children, I have all my children here today. Sam's coming through the door, uh, Keenan might be on his way, but one of the things that has always been special in this room here is that we've cooked together. Even the, per there's another person on another side of the camera. Well, Tori cooks, but she doesn't like to cook. And I like to cook, so it works out. But she makes about three dishes that I think are good, but she thinks I don't think is good. One is the chicken dish. She makes this terrific chicken lemon dish. What's up, Sam? Hi, it's so, so, hey, everybody, come on in here, man. You need to come. Everybody's been on here so far. So this is my other son. This is my other son, Sam. And he's going to join us with the conversation. These guys have been extremely active the with the, uh, the, the, not COVID, but the racism. and the, They haven't been looting, but they have been protesting. And I'm so proud to be able to interview them on my show tonight. So, here it is. So what we're doing is we're sauteing up some potatoes. And it's at 275, so I'm going to turn it up to 375. I'm going to keep my eye on it. And that's that. 
<laughs> Never wear clothes you want to ruin unless you're Jeezy off of the kitchen and you can be suited up. Uh, Jeezy, I'm going to follow you, but right now I'm a green union. Support your union. Yes, I am a union worker from Multnomah County. Power to the people. I can say that. <laughs> union strong. So anyway, so what I've just done is I've added my, my I keep on saying chives, my uh, leeks and my garlic. I'm incorporate that in there, and when they start to change, become translucent, I'll add the mushrooms, and I'm gonna add a little butter. Now, I don't add salt. What I learned, if you add salt to potatoes in the beginning, it actually starts to bring water out. I don't want the water to come out quite yet. I'm gonna add the salt at the very end. It's gonna be a smoked salt. I'm gonna use a smoked salt that I recently found. I like to experiment with different types of salt because I like things to be totally organic. I like when you put it in your mouth, your brain goes, oh my fucking God. How does it get better than this? Or, okay, I'll say it again so you can get this. If it's so orgasmic, <laughs> oh my God, that's what I'm going for inside the belly, okay? So what would it take for you to step it up in the kitchen so that every time you put something in somebody's face, some food, something, I should clean that up. If you put your food in somebody's face, they'd be like, oh my God, <laughs> you know? How does it get better than that? Okay, so the potatoes look like they're yummy, yummy, yummy. And the onions are quite cooked up. I'm gonna add some butter. Now, Makita, don't look. Don't look. Because I'm about to add the mushrooms. And mushrooms has a tendency, when I cook them, to seem to dry out the oils, which is fine. But I want to make sure that it's maintained for uh, the eggs, so it won't stick. The eggs won't stick. And this one doesn't have any dairy in it. So just giving people a heads up. There's no dairy in this today, other than the little butter that I just added. And you let this cook up. That's what that looks like. Let's cook down a little bit. This on there. Next, the sausage. Then the eggs. Then we go into the oven for about three to five minutes. And voila, something special, something yummy. Once again, COVID time, people, if you believe that. But I'm going to leave that belief alone because I'm, everybody has a right to decide their own destiny. Line with Bob Marley, and I really live by that. I might not agree with something, but I can't be an allowance for other people's beliefs and points of view and not make a mind. What would it be like for all of us to step in that space of asking the question like, that's not my bag of tea. I'm not rolling like that. That's your opinion. Uh, one of the things that I'm very careful with but what's going on on the planet right now is the separation and limitation of, of humans and human beings. And what would it look like for us to step into that space of being in question on my own? That's just all I'm saying. So the reason I jumped on that, one of the things that I do a lot in the kitchen is I wash my hands. COVID, guys, you're supposed to be washing your hands all the time. And I'm saying this over and over again because this opportunity for you not to make people sick when you start to cook. If you eat something out of the pan, you actually, the saliva can slip back in there and make somebody sick. If you rub your face or scratch your hair and chop something up, there's different bacteria that you can put in your food. If you go to the bathroom, for God forbid, and not wash your hands after taking a number two, there's a possibility for giving them food poison and diarrhea, they will re receive diarrhea. And most times in the United States right now, that has been the culprit. Bad hygiene. So what would it take for you all to wash your ass? <laughs> no, just kidding. Had to make it comical. Had to make it comical. So now, look at our vegetables. They're all cooked up. What we're going to do is going to add our sausage. Want the sausage to get all nice and warm. You have potatoes. And the other piece, I like the color. Oh, one of that excited sausage you got out. I'm going to do, I'm going to wrap this here. And this. So one, you'll see what's going to happen in a second. I'm going to add the spinach and I've been able to get to the point where I don't need that much dairy in that recently. It's, I'm learning how to live without dairy. It's like being in recovery. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's dairy recovery. You know, my ass love ice cream. But the, y'all know that. I, I make homemade ice cream, and I would come down here at night when everybody was asleep, especially when they was kids. I would wait till like mm, midnight when Helene definitely fell, fell asleep. <laughs> well, that was before high school. He ain't fooling nobody no more. He's the cat's out the box. <laughs> yes, him. I would yeah. wake him to sleep, and then I would come downstairs with my homemade coffee ice cream and scoop some up and be like, oh my God, so orgasmic. You know that face, you go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. That's the type of food I'm trying to create. And so here's the piece, people. I know some people might be offended by some things I'm saying. You need to go to another page because the reason I'm saying that is that no longer am I willing to compromise my joy. And this is something that's fun and light. What we need right now is people to laugh and have a lot more fun and enjoy good food, okay? If you don't like it, it ain't easy. Just a joke, just a joke. I got something else coming up with this. This will be too late by the time it's out. I am actually doing a special. That's smoked salt that I put in there. Just a little bit because you have sausage. You don't want it too salty and it's salt in the eggs. I was gonna talk about, you probably can go back and see this and find this on Facebook, but I am doing a Gaslight Summit, which probably will have been aired by the time this is aired. And if you're interested, you can go to my website and you'll be able to find it at www.beingjohnastro. And I'm going to talk about a bunch of different things that I've been saying before. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to top this with spinach. See, Makita, now we got to incorporate the, the, the greenery in it. So you have the red, the green, and the black, the brown. <laughs> now we're talking about a flag, an American flag of multiple colors, of multiple flavors. What would that be like to live like that every single day? So we're gonna let this kind of create a crust on the bottom and then we're gonna stick it, the rest of it in the oven so that it can complete its journey <laughs> to yumminess. A patata, that's what it looks like. So right now, what I do also, sometimes I rotate the skillet to make sure the liquid egg creates the base at the bottom. Now, what I will do, because everybody here might not want, this is another thing you can do. Let's say you have people who don't want any dairy. But when you pull it out, you can leave, I'll pull out uh, Parmesan cheese. Well, actually I don't use Parmesan cheese. I use Romano cheese because I like it, and it's not dairy, cow dairy, it's actually sheep. But you can put that, put that as on, on a topping if you want to still incorporate a dairy into this frittata. So we have a crust that's beginning to form on the bottom. We open up this oven. Somebody comes over here, you can open up this oven. Uh, we stick this in 375 in the middle rack. Give it 10 minutes. And I'll come back and show you what this delight looks like when we return. Watch it, okay. Okay, people, we're having a special delight today. So as you can see, it's cooked up. Uh, the spinach is gonna be a little bit crunchy. Uh, you can see the sauce, everything's incorporated. We're gonna let this cool for a second. One of the things that I've learned with this, when you do a frittata, do not forget to put this on the end. Because if you take your beautiful hand, cancel that, tap that off, and you put that on there right now, you would be like this. <laughs> okay, you'll be like, you do not want that. That will ruin your day and you'll be buttering your hand up or you have to call Bernie to find some homeopathic remedy to, to take care of burns. But anyway, yes, voila, this is what uh, potato looks like. My dear daughter and my wife don't like mushrooms, so they're gonna, I'm going to make some scrambled eggs and I might show you what that looks like in a few seconds too. Or that could be something later. This is getting kind of hot. Let me move my hand. Okay, so uh, next We'll be in the kitchen, in the dining room eating. Thanks for watching me. Once again, please subscribe, the button, push, hang out with me. I'm funny. I'm fun. I'm cuddly. And once again, what would it take for you to have ease, joy, and glory in all that you be and do? Peace.